this play, everybody dies. <laughs> so the prologue literally tells everything about the play, but it's a pretty fun journey. Hi, I'm Crystal Marie Stewart, and we're about to read the prologue. Two households, both alike in dignity. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge, break to new mutiny. Where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured piteous overthrows doth with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end not could remove, is but now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. If I was watching a play and someone came out of the beginning and was like, this is the whole play, I would be like, what? So why do you think Shakespeare thought it was okay to tell us the whole plot? Well, you know, sometimes in a scary movie, we know stuff about the play. Like we know stuff about the movie, we know stuff about what's gonna happen. Like, oh, this, the villain is hiding in the closet. We already know that. But that makes it even more scary for us because we know what's gonna happen next. But the people in there don't know what's gonna happen. So we know everything that's gonna happen here, right? We know what's gonna happen to the Capulets of the Montagues and Romeo and Juliet. None of the characters know. That can make it even more tense and more juicy for us. And that's something called dramatic irony. When the audience knows something that the characters don't know, it can make things more suspenseful or more funny. There are jokes in Romeo and Juliet, but it's mostly gonna make things more suspenseful for us, the audience, because this is a tragedy. Romeo and Juliet is filled with dramatic irony. It's very stressful. For example, while we watch Romeo and Juliet fall in love, we know that Juliet is a Capulet and Romeo is a Montague. They don't know. So they're just like, oh yay, everything's great. Got a new boyfriend and we're just like, no, no. Very stressful. So I know earlier that we talked about how we know that Romeo and Juliet are married, but only Romeo knows. But it's a little more specific and horrible than that. So before Romeo even gets there, Tybalt is talking all this smack about Romeo, saying how horrible he is, and Mercutio is standing up for him, and he's like, don't talk about Romeo like that. Romeo's my best friend. You can't say these things. And Mercutio's like, got his boys back, right? So then Romeo gets there, and Mercutio's like, yeah, yeah, my boy Romeo's here. And then Tybalt's like, all right, Romeo, let's fight. And Romeo says, Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. And Mercutio's like, excuse you. I just, what is wrong with you? I just was defending you. I can't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge Tybalt to a duel on your behalf. You've clearly lost your mind. And we, the audience, we know why. Romeo doesn't want to fight Tybalt. It's actually a perfectly reasonable reason to not want to fight Tybalt, but Romeo doesn't say anything. And so now Mercutio is about to fight Tybalt, which is the worst option, the worst potential option for everyone, for everyone. Mercutio doesn't even have to be involved at all. That's dramatic irony. We, the audience, just want to run up on stage. And then one of the most horrifying dramatic irony portions is when we, the audience, know Juliet is not really dead. Friar knows Juliet's not really dead. Romeo busts on stage, freaking out about how Juliet's dead, he's got some poison, and we're just like, no, no. And you just wanna run out of your seat and slap the poison out of his hand, but you can't do that because that would be rude and you know it's a play. 
That's dramatic irony. And I'm pretty sure it was probably like that in Shakespeare's time when people had much, uh, they didn't have very good audience etiquette back in the day. So like, who knows? I don't know. I couldn't find any examples of anyone running up on stage in the Globe Theater, but I, I don't know. It might have happened. So that's the point of dramatic irony, especially in a tragedy. It makes you feel like this could have been prevented, like you could do something. It makes it really, really tense for the audience, even when you literally know everything that happened because of the prologue. Now, it's your turn. Draw a two-panel comic. In the first panel, show us something the reader knows that the characters don't know. And then in the second panel, show us what happens when that information is revealed. Check the link below for our experience guide to see more activities and discussion questions. And stay tuned next week for more willpower. Bye.